Chapter 7, Introduction to Sampling Distributions. In this video, we'll be discussing the concept of sampling error. Recall in Chapter 1, we learned the difference between a population and a sample, and how they relate, where the population is an entire group that we're interested in studying or understanding, and the sample is a subset or smaller group that's pulled from the population. So the sampling error is the difference between a measure computed from a sample, known as a statistic, and the corresponding measure computed from the population, known as a parameter. So here we've got our formula for our sampling error, where we'll take our sample mean minus our population mean. Some things to note about the sampling error is that we will be using simple random samples. So recall this is where we're selecting a sample from the population, and every sample has the same chance of being chosen. Now, the size of the sampling error depends on which sample is selected. So if I'm randomly pulling a sample and I coincidentally pick all very large numbers, or I pick a sample and I coincidentally have all very small numbers, or another sample where I'm lucky and get a mix of numbers, we'll get different sampling errors. Now, a sampling error could be positive or negative, and there's a chance that you could get a different sample mean for each possible sample. So imagine if our class is the population of interest, and we have about 30 students in the class, and I want to pull a sample of five students, I can repeatedly pull samples of five students because it's random, and I can pick any five, I don't know which ones I'll get, and if I try to calculate the sample mean for those five students, let's say your height or your weight, or how long it takes you to drive to work, I could get a different sample mean each time. So recall in chapter 3 we learned how to calculate the population mean and the sample mean. So this is more of a refresher where we will add up all of our x's and divide it by how many x's we have or the population size or if we're doing a sample mean, the sample size. So here in our example, if the population mean is denoted by mu and it equals to 32 and a half minutes to commute to work, and then we take a sample mean of six drivers, and that yields a sample mean of 36.2 minutes to get to work. Then for our sampling error, we'll take the sample mean minus the population mean, and we get a sampling error of 3.7 minutes. In other words, we're acknowledging that our sample is not a perfect representation of the population, because we're not studying the entire group, we're just studying a subset. So we have to recognize that there's going to be a slight difference between the sample and the population data. So let's look at uh, example six. It's very similar to a homework problem. Uh, make sure you have your worksheet in front of you so you can follow along. The following data are 16 values in a population. So we've got our numbers here. You're asked to compute the population mean. Then you're asked to compute uh, the sample mean based on these data, and then to find the sampling error. And then in part C, you're asked to find the range of extreme sampling error for a particular sample size. So let's go through each step. In part A, to find our population mean, the first thing we'll do is add up all of our numbers and then divide by 16. So when I add up all my values, I get 288. And since I know there are 16 values given to us in the story, or I can count how many values I have, I'll go ahead and throw the 16 underneath, plug this into my calculator, and I'll get 18. In part B, we're asked to find the sample mean using a simple random sample of nine values. So these nine values here came out of the population above. So to compute our sample mean, we will add up these nine numbers and divide it by how many I have, in this case, nine. So when I add up all my values, I get 153. I'll throw my nine underneath, and when I plug this into my calculator, I get a sample mean of 17. Now for the sampling error, it's very important that we remember the order. Sample mean always comes first, and then we subtract the population mean, because we're comparing the sample mean against the population mean. So I'll take my 17 minus 18, and therefore our sampling error for this particular sample is negative 1. Now imagine if I go back and I pick a different um, sample, and it's some combination of nine numbers, and I run it again, 
I will likely get a different sample mean and in turn get a different sampling error. And I can repeat this over and over. So in part C, you're asked to determine the range of extreme sampling error for a sample size of four. So our sample size is different now. We're focused on four numbers. And the idea or the concept behind the range of extreme sampling errors, that means um, the very largest numbers and the very smallest numbers. So what I'll do is I'll take my 16 numbers from before in our population and I'm going to sort them from low to high. That way I can see which ones are my lowest numbers and which ones are my highest numbers. So you can see here I've got it uh, sorted from 12 up to 25 and in blue here are my lowest numbers and so we'll go ahead and find the sample mean for these four lowest numbers and we use four because we're told please use a sample size of four. So when I add up my numbers I get 54 and I'll divide by four. So the lowest possible sample mean that I can get is 13 and a half. And then for my sampling error, what we'll do is we'll take our sample mean of 13 and a half and subtract the population mean that we calculated in part A, the 18, to find the sampling error. In this case, it's going to be negative 4.5. So in other words, imagine if uh, the luck of the draw, I pull a sample of four, they happen to be the smallest numbers in our population. That's our lowest possible sample mean we just calculated. And here's the sampling error associated with it. Now, we want to find the highest possible sample mean. So in our four uh, biggest numbers here uh, in blue, we'll go ahead and find the sample mean of these four numbers. So I'll add up these values and divide by four. So I get 93 over four. And when I plug that into my calculator, I get 23.25. And then to find my sampling error, I'll take my sample mean of 23.25 and subtract the 18 again from part A. And so that'll give us a sampling error of 5.25. And so the range of our extreme sampling error for a sample size of four is negative four and a half to 5.25. So if you have any questions, just let me know.